mental health has been like on a PR um, rebrand mm-hmm. the past like I would say ten years maybe. I would agree. I agree. Um, and I think that is really good. I mean, and this is not limited. Just I know we're gonna get into like the faith, but just in general, like in pop culture, yeah, mental health is a it's understood as a um, an actual condition. Mm-hmm. But whereas I think before it was looked at as a as a, like a what's wrong with you? What's wrong with <laughs> you? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Like you so I think that's a good thing. So people yeah. are reframing the 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 actual word and and what it means, and mm-hmm. I think that's good for culture, good for society, and overall good for people that we yeah. are aware of what mental health is. Yeah, and it's something that we have to be sensitive to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think I've even become really sensitive to it because even yeah. when you would hear people talk about therapy, you know, I would be like, well, they. They must be crazy. <laughs> you know oh what I'm gosh. saying? But no, like I honestly have goals to go to therapy. You know what sure, I'm saying? I um just because I just believe that there's a that's a great resource to be able to for someone who's knowledgeable in um psychological sure. like, education, things like that, who could be able to help you, you know what I'm saying? But it's I I I'm really trying to think of even the progressions that has taken place, like where it kind of started, started yeah. and things where, like yeah, that. Yeah, where where did things kind of send this movement into like a uh, full motion you know like what what were the things that happened in culture you know what that, like, i think cre- i going? think covid played a, a oh, part in that oh for sure I, I think that definitely because sure. you were like check because you got to check on people you're oh, yeah, in your yeah. house you only see your four walls right our whole world changed at once like you know so i, I think i don't think that covid started it well it could have now thinking because i mean that would have been over 10 years ago yeah i guess i would have maybe played a part in it but i do think that that yeah. played a part also, in the, also, in the, in the it, journey it of it and also i also think there have been tragically uh like well-known people who have ended their lives too i was thinking that too like i mean i can't think of all but mm-hmm. anthony bourdain comes mm-hmm. to mind uh the the like the um the obviously like the world traveling foodie yeah who was doing all this living his best life mm-hmm. quote unquote and doing all these amazing food mm-hmm. reviews and then my man, you know, takes his life. So I think there have been like things of, you know, there's, there's been moments of people who you think have it like all together. Yeah. Or have everything and they're ending their life. And it's like, yo, people was, um, what's that? What's that uh, like sentiment? I think that's kind of like, this man, it came out of COVID too. Yo, check on your strong yes. friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. That, people weren't saying that 10 years ago. We weren't checking on nobody. <laughs> We were, checking Ooh, on we, we were checking on the ones who that would may, maybe look like they require checking yes, on. Yes. But yeah. if you had it together, nobody was checking, no on, was checking you. on you. Yeah, yeah. Nobody was checking on us. Nobody, nobody was checking on me. Nobody no, was checking no, on us. Who, who was checking on us? I think about that Kendrick Lamar song. Mm, who, yeah. who was, I ain't going to say the exclusive version, obviously, but who's praying Who's praying for me? Yeah, right. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, who, who's checking on the strong person? Yeah. Do you feel like people have gotten more comfortable talking about mental health? Or do you feel like it's something that People yeah. are still kind of hesitant on. I think it depends on the generation, the culture, mm-hmm. and the upbringing. So I think there are younger, uh, a younger demographic. Um, I think is more sensitive and open to it. I think an older, an older generation. When I say older, I mean I'm talking about like fifty plus. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> what mental health? We had, we had to go. We had to get up and go to work. <laughs> right. Yes. What's, the, what's the mental health Right, day? Go back to sleep. Wake back up. You'll be okay. You'll be yeah, all right. You'll know be what all right. Saying? Take some robot testing. Yeah. Know? Ginger ale. <laughs> Lay ginger down. Ale. <laughs> yeah, mental health issues. Take some ginger ale. <laughs> take <laughs> Call you. Right, black culture understands when we say that. Here's, yes. some, here's, here's some anointing oil for that. Day. <laughs> for yes, <you>. right. <laughs> let's pray about it. I feel like let's pray about it should be a shirt. And then it should be like maybe scratched out. <laughs> <laughs> we know how many people will get mad. The controversy that will come behind that. Oh my gosh. Just, I think it's the just... Just we should, should, we should have a shirt that says just pray about it and just like read out the yeah, just, like, okay, yeah. I can, it's not, I can feel it's that. Not, it's we want, we want you to pray about right. it, right? But that's more we could do more too, mm-hmm. like it's more than just pray, yeah, it's more, it's more than just thoughts and prayers, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I feel like, yeah, pop culture, mental health, uh, it's it's a thing, I think it's definitely made its way and in, 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 in it's relevant. I mean, what do you think has if is there anything that has not been good that's come out of? Mental health being such an aware, like an awareness movement. I mean, there is so much great and good, right? Yeah. Has there been anything that maybe could feel like overcorrecting or the pendulum swinging too far 
Ha, has there mm-hmm. been instances where the awareness of mental health, there may be, ha, have there been people or moments where people have utilized or exploited mental health to get away or to not do or to do things that benefited them? Like, but the person who really is depressed, has there been people who may be, you can't, I mean, it's all about how you, what you say you are, but have yeah. there been people that have like, yo, I'm calling out, I need a, I need a mental health day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, no, I'm not going <laughs> to lie. I've heard people say that. I'm, we just, I'm just calling it a mental health day. And it's like, well, I get what you're saying. It's just that I, I get your reasoning to wanting to take a day off. For but sure. there are people who genuinely have days where they're just not able to withstand it sure. their emotions are all the stress has weighed them down their minds are spread thin i get they it they need days like that so people who take advantage of mental health days yeah. i remember hearing students oh i have because i work with middle school girls sure, sure. yeah tell so me, talk i've about heard that. things like well we i just cause called it a mental health day and i'm like you cannot do that you know what i'm saying oh, because okay. we want to be able if we take advantage of mental health days and use it for our own personal benefit for whatever it is, then we don't want for it to be a cry wolf situation for therefore when you need it, oh, people that's... don't take you seriously. And, like, and we, and we could, because mental health is serious. So it's therefore serious. we don't want to abuse those um, luxuries because mental health day is a luxury. We didn't have that in school. You know what I'm saying? So nah. for people, there are some people when they have those options at work and at school, just from my personal experience, I've heard people say that they were going to use those to their advantage. You got to be, I feel like you just got to be careful. Yeah, be careful. I mean, and I'm, I'm, I want to just make this clear too. I am no, me, Ace here, I am no expert. No, same. I am no extreme reader, researcher, clinical, you know, uh, intellectual on the topic of mental health. Mm-hmm. In fact, I'm probably like, coming of age and understanding it i would say these past four to five years so i don't yeah. want to hear us or hear people misconstrue what I'm, I'm i'm coming at it like yo this is what i know yeah but also this is what i don't know mm-hmm. i mean but at the same time i mean i think it is fair like you you a friend like we're homies we're, yeah right right you a strong person she's like oh so this, this, this is a therapy session oh, <laughs> no. i see how ace did that y'all oh ace don't put me okay how, how, how is your mental health my, I've, so I've, in the past, when I was in middle school, I did have um, some suicidal ideation mm. um, that really took a toll on me. Um, I wish I had this grand, mm. <laughs> that's the only bad part, I feel like, just for me. Telling that part is because I don't have this, like, grand story where, like, I heard this sermon or someone talked to me or I heard this song and then I didn't want to, I didn't have those thoughts anymore. I truly didn't have that. It yeah. was just... I just kept living. Like my grandma always say, like, you just keep on living, you know? And that saying always means different things when she says it, but just like, I just pressed on through, you know what I'm saying? And by the grace of God, God kept me. And therefore I was able to, you mm. know, um, my, all my emotions just, just shift. Things got better. You know what I'm saying for me? Um, but that was a long time ago, but I, I do, there are times when I do get social anxiety, mm. um, which is so, which I hate Ace. Oh, why, I why, hate why, it. Why, I, why do you hate that? Because I, I do, there are times when I do want to talk to people. Right. I, you know, do want to socialize and things like that, but sometimes overthinking gets the best of me and, uh, therefore, I in my head when it comes to social conversations. So therefore, there are times. Don't get me wrong. I do like being on the wall, being real low key to myself. But there are sometimes I do maybe want to speak to some people, right. meet new people. But there, I'm in my head so sure. much, and that um, anxiety kind of gets the best of me. Sure. So it kind of like locks me in, kind of keeps me like you know uh, okay. um, to myself Par- when I don't paralyzing. always want to be. Yeah, in a way, yeah. which I don't like. Yeah. But um. I think that's kind of the biggest battle sometimes I get where I'm constantly having to right. make sure I'm not overthinking and sure. in my head and so yeah. much. You know, we talked about like on a past episode of how rest and we we're saying how like sometimes your mind goes yeah. sometimes, for like that for me. It's uh, like that. So that, that's your mental health struggle, you would say. Yeah, it's, I it's, would say. Yeah, yeah. So, so you, do you feel like those, those seasons of a more a darker uh, ex, uh, experience, you feel like you've overcome or have overcome or overcoming that more? Um, like the, 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 the depression and oh yeah yeah okay, yeah okay. yeah, yeah. That's, I've, that's I've, I've by the grace of God I'm grateful that I've never dope. experienced that again um, yeah by that's the grace good. of God I'm Shout happy I've God. never Shout experienced God. that yeah I mean God for real yeah. I mean yeah mental health is yeah it's like I mean obviously you know being an A and R uh, working with the artists here the artists mm-hmm. that the all the shout out all the listeners that tune into the 116 Life and play the music that people love and mm-hmm. I see the artists at uh uh you know 
Yeah, you see it firsthand. I, I see, I see it firsthand. Yeah. I see him at the concerts mm-hmm. after like the hundredth picture, and I can see like you know I can see that yeah. fatigue. It's like yo, I'm here, mm-hmm. and I'm I you know somebody's um, being blessed and encouraged through this music, and so but I personally is like mentally I'm tired. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like I see both sides, and I think we could talk about that more. But it's the artist mind. And how mental health affects the creator, I think, is a conversation that um, people say they have it, but I'm like, to to like people say that, but then you still see you still be reading like wild comments on, on no, social we, media. Let's. Well, I want to. I want to pick yeah. your brain as far as that yeah. goes more in the next to- in the sure. next segment. Listen, y'all, don't go anywhere. It's the one one six life here on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius XM, Channel one forty. Ace Harris, Mia Evans. We'll be right back. Yeah. And we're back here on the sure. 116 Life here on Holy Culture Radio Series XM Channel 140. Ace Harris, Mia Evans checking in for another episode. Yeah. We're talking about mental health here um, for Mental Health Awareness Month, that uh, which is what May is about. Sure. And you, I really want to dive into you talking about artists and sure. you being able to, because here I reach you, of course, you work with artists sure. firsthand. And there's a lot that goes into um, music and then of course then performing is a whole other thing and touring is another thing like you you see all that firsthand when it comes to artists and even maybe even deal with it yourself um, how is it for you seeing that firsthand seeing artists go through ups and downs of mental health sure. and um, stress and being in their head overthinking you know things like that sure I think that's, that's a great question me I, I I didn't know when I started becoming an A&R I guess I kind of felt I didn't know that one of the unspoken job descriptions is like a uh, counselor. <laughs> mm, really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, in a way, I think anybody who confides in people who are public figures or mm. have a platform, the people that are worked behind the scenes with them closely, that's managers, that's A&R's, label reps, mm, okay. um, personal assistants, mm. they sometimes even barbers, people that are close with these people, they get to see... Um, not just the public facing side, but the internal side and the oh, real wow. side. Yeah. And so like for me, um, I feel like I've experienced that here at Reach. And um, I think all the artists that I've been blessed to work with, amazing roster of people, um, there are moments and have been moments where you get to see someone's real mental mental health struggle and the weight of the platform that it puts on that mental health. And so like I, I, mean, I can just speak candidly about things that I've already you guys probably already know about, like. Um, you know, Andy, Andy talked about it on one of his, 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 one of his greatest bodies of work. Um, and that was the arrow, yeah. uh, to me, um, and clarity. Like uh, I mean, imagine that song title, right? That song helped me a lot. That whole project <sighs> helped me a lot. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a wrestle of faith mm-hmm. and a wrestle of mental health. Right. And here's a, somebody who's a believer just pouring his emotions into that wrestle. But in him doing that, he's actually giving pe- other people, the freedom to step into that same tension. And and he talked about, you know, the, the anxiety, just the weights of like, how do I recreate the magic that I did? Why do I feel this pressure? And I think he's been candid about that. And, uh, you know, just being, and he's like a, you know, and he's like a, a Syracuse, New York, tough, mm-hmm. you know, jock, He's a t- like he's a mm-hmm. strong you wouldn't expect dude. Expect to hear that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think that him owning that was like really special. It was, yeah. Because you know, it, it, t- it takes especially for men, um, for Christian men to like, yo, I was balling, losing it. You know what I'm saying? I think that's freeing because I think uh, men, men, we, I can't speak to women because I don't know how. No, yeah, yeah. But sometimes a lot of men, you know, we be we be crying in, in silence, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I think that was well. But then RG. On uh, especially it's, it's what he went through um, before New Hollywood, he's mm-hmm. he's spoken about that many yeah. times. And I mean, I, I I remember in 2021, like post pandemic, and we couldn't. RG was like off the text, off yeah. the grid, and I, I mean, it was like he talked about it in his song MySpace label <laughs> on the line, trying to keep up with investment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, 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 that line was birthed out of literally. Um, I went to, I drove 50 minutes on a random Tuesday and got his favorite food and then called him till I was like five minutes away and like, hey bro, I'm, I'm at your house. Oh, that's real. <laughs> uh, I haven't heard from you in months. Nobody has. How you doing? And just pulled up. I had to pull mm-hmm. up on bro. I had, check, you know, I had to check up on my strong friend, you yeah. know? So I think, uh, you know, and that that's some of the mental stuff that mental health struggles that, and then, 
even dealing with Lecrae, who I think he's been candid about his stuff too. Like I mm-hmm. remember there was a season in pre-restoration album where we were working on it, and and you know Ben Washer had to tell me. Um, by the way, I know y'all been you've been killing the A's fighting. Lecrae is about to sit down for two months, and he's not he, he's gonna cold turkey. Like we're not working on like he's 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 about to do some mm, clinical yeah. work to handle his mental uh stresses that were again this is not this a no no offense but this is not like a, a 12 year old that sounds belittling but this is not a this isn't a light thing no nah, it's yeah. not a light thing um this is a real clinical mental mm. health so it, it 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 gave me um it educated me mm. like oh okay you know it's a big homie this yeah. is like you know what i'm saying reader learner leader mental health the, that attack which i think it is spiritual in its attack but mental and how it affects you. So mm-hmm. I, I, he he was you know. So I think seeing those things up, up close kind of gave me the the uh, humility, Mia, and like the graciousness to like see how artists specifically are affected by the the weight of mental health. You know, yeah. I know I said a lot. So no, that was good. How is it having? Because you know how sometimes when someone's going through something like that, yeah, you're kind of like. I want to do something, but yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to do anything where I'm overstepping, or I want to say the right thing, but I don't know what that thing is yet. Mm. But yet, yeah, in your case, I know this is business. We got to get things done, <laughs> right. but I still want to make sure you good. Like, what is the tension between that for you when it comes to, um, when it comes to all the things that you just mentioned with with artists and things like that? That's a great question. Um, my tension for me, which I hope is rooted in a biblical uh, purity of like how we're supposed to deal with our, love our neighbors well. And we do have business to run. Schools have to keep going. There, there, there's work to be done, but I think this is like a challenge for people who are probably, uh, probably been more, like we can't erase the humanity um, in the work we do. Mm-hmm. So like there's a producer that, uh, I, I won't say his name, we, I, I've been working with him um, he's a fire talented. I mean, he's worked with, he, he's had people tapping in with him at the highest level, even outside of the Christian space. People like, Dre, he's a talented producer. He's like, he's dope. Yeah. And he's working on some of the stuff with one of our artists. And uh, he was kind of slow on some getting some files back. Mm-hmm. And then I was kind of like checking on him again. Yeah, like, y'all yeah. need these files, bro. And then uh, he, he's probably, if he's watching, he'll probably know who's exactly who. He's like, yo, it's about me. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, and, uh, and then he hit me like, yo, honestly, bro, I'm having some real struggles. Like, I'm 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 struggling. Mm. And I had to like pause and was like, bro, let me just he was like, he asked me, like, yo, can you send me some resources or some like even like some spiritual like resources? I mean, obviously I I don't have any clinical angle, but I yeah. I was like, all right, bro, get the files this when you can. Here goes some stuff that's been helping me. Here goes some podcasts, some books, some some like sermon clips, things that I like. And he said, quote, Dang, because he's worked with like again a lot of different people. He was like, dang, um, touching so bringing me to tears. Look, he was like, man, y'all care about producers and their actual like the person. Mm. And I was like, yeah, that, I guess that's how we supposed to care. That's, yeah, is that how we supposed to carry care for one another as believers? I think that's what we supposed no, to do. No, right? absolutely, <laughs> right. It's not just, hey, I need you to get this work done. I mean, we have to still. No, yeah. I, I mean, I still had to hit them like, couple, but hey, they I, live lives. I need them files after. Yeah, I, I still had right. to. He was like, I know, I got you. But thank you for just for caring mm-hmm. about my soul yeah. in light of you needing me to work for you. Yeah. Because it's more than just an, a contract. If we are believers, Mia, now it's a covenant. Mm. Oh, now, that's so good. Now, yeah. now we, we, we're, we're a body. Mm-hmm. We're, we're connected. Mm-hmm. Yes, we got work to do. We got streams to count. We mm-hmm. got content to shoot. And as we show up to do our work, we got real internal things we're dealing Struggles. with, mental stuff we're dealing with. So let's, in, in the work we do, let's not make sure to check on and check in as we're doing the work That's on good. as we're doing as we're doing the work like check on hey, hey how you doing i still gotta i still gotta have to have the ask the hard questions mm-hmm. but it's like hey how you doing you good mm-hmm. all right i know we got work to do but all right do we need to step aside and pray for a little bit whatever we whatever we got to do we can't just be so transactional mm. we forget the human that god put in front of us to actually work with so i know i just said I, I, let me just fall back <laughs> whoa that was a bar man i, know, I gotta yeah. sit with that for a minute you and that, said that, we gotta check on and check in mm, yeah 
yeah. transactional. Yeah. Sometimes we lose our humanity. That's so yeah, real, bro. We do. We do. That's so real. Um, we, do, we do. It's it's part of the part of the. I think mental health. I, I I can't speak a lot. I mean, but I think underneath it there is a spiritual component that maybe we need to be sensitive to as believers. Is like we need to be sensitive to the spirit and how to address mental health, but not over spiritualize. You know How do you feel like Christian culture yeah. and the church has accepted mental health over the past couple of years? I mean, we kind of talked about it, whereas people have said the, just pray about it. You know what know, I'm saying? Do you right. feel like we've grown? Do you feel like we're kind of like, what, where, where do you, what, what's your viewpoint on that? I think we're growing. I, I think, think we're growing too. People, yeah, yeah. people like, again, yeah, I'm speaking to myself, like mm-hmm. the culture I came from, it wasn't like a, we didn't, it was, we were ignorant, mm-hmm. not, not necessarily ne- ne- negative towards it. We just didn't know. We just didn't know. Uh, and, if we, and when we did, we were like, just pray about yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? That was our, de- that was our reflex. <laughs> yeah, that's real. <laughs> hey, press on and pray. So I think we're doing better. Um, I think we are growing. I think there's a lot of work to be done. I, what comes to mind is, I think a t-shirt that Preston and Jackie had on was, was like Jesus and therapy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's a helpful. Therapy and theology. Yes. Mm-hmm. I think that's a helpful posture on how we can lean into mental health. Mm-hmm. Not trying to separate the two, but the clinical work needs to be done for people who have real issues and the spiritual component yes. that needs to be addressed or um, you know, considered and, and not just some people need medication, some people need counseling, therapy, yes. And I just pray that we pray th- to make those decisions too. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Not yeah. just default to I'm mentally struggling and so I'm going to do clinical work outside of seeing how the real doctor yes. um, can, can help you, you know, get there. So, I mean, what, what do you think? I mean, how do you feel the church is doing? I think I agree with you. I do think we're growing. I do think I do agree with the standpoints of Jesus and therapy, therapy and theology. I think that honestly, you, for someone who has mental health battles, you need both. For sure. Of course, like, you know, I think Jesus, of course, is going to be the cornerstone. For sure. And, but I, I think things like therapy are a great resource where you're able to, you know, sure. I, I've, I've heard of a lot of dip people go to Christian counseling and different things like that. I think with the church, uh, church culture, some people I would say is that I think we, I think we have been hesitant in having conversations like this sure. because either we don't know what to say or we don't want to say the just pray because sometimes for some people they feel like that can be insensitive yeah, sometimes. Yeah, shallow. But the thing I will say is that I was telling Ace off air um, of how 38% of believers think that Bible study and prayer alone will cure mental health. And mm. I thought it was an interesting, interesting mm. reading. And one thing I'm, I was kind of, I'm not going to lie to you. I was kind of wrestling with that when I saw it just because one thing I'm never going to do is under mis- underestimate the power of prayer. I will never do that mm. or underestimate the power that Jesus gave us. You know what for I'm sure. saying? And, and what that can do for you and your emotions and your struggles internally. And along with that, I do think that it's possible for us to talk to someone mm. and even also whether it's talking to someone professional or even talking to each other. Ace. Mm. I feel like sometimes with the church, we have these walls up mm. or, we have this mask and vulnerability, something that we really tap into for sure. or the perfection of it all. I was talking to somebody about this the other day. Sometimes in church culture, we have this perfection level where don't nobody want to share what they're really going through. For sure. You know what for I'm sure. saying? I don't know. It's sometimes it's sure. an embarrassment or you kind of, you going to feel alone in it. So therefore yeah. you don't want to put yourself out there yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah I, ain't, I ain't going and, all the way there. Yeah. And, Sometimes I think that kind of like keeps us from each other, yeah. you know, because perfection helps no one because nobody's living that life. You know what I'm Dang, saying? So perfection it's like, helps no one because nobody's perfect. You know what I'm saying? Because it's kind of like we can, I, yeah. I can't, if, if I was to share this, all this struggle I was going with you yeah. and you're kind of like, oh, well, just pray about it. <laughs> I would feel I, I would feel like we couldn't connect on that. For sure. But say if you say if you went through something similar to what I went through. And but you don't you hold that from me. I can't relate to you because I can't relate to perfection. Nobody can relate to that. Nobody, you know what I'm saying? Nobody. And sometimes with church culture and Christian culture, we play this perfection role when 
we need each other out here. Some of us really other. struggling out here. And yeah. sometimes you showing the scars of what you're going through For or sure. giving a listening ear or being like, well, you know what? I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to pray with you. And I'm going to get you some resources if you need them. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Like For us sure. being like able that. to reach out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like in a sense, like, I feel like us being able nah, to reach out yeah, and meet people where they are, we'll be able to really like bring more people in and accept the mental health topic as a whole. Sure. And I, man, that's, that's so dope. And I, something I do want to speak to as we come back is like, 38% feel that they cannot, that like prayer can cure. And I, I, I just want to be sensitive, like some thorns in our life, God don't take away. And I wonder if we're approaching mm. pain, stress, mental health, physical health, anything from a place of like, mm. Yo, what's the remedy? It's like, um, yeah, we'll say more. We no, we're going to come this, back. It's <laughs> the we 116 Life. Holy Culture Radio, Sirius Channel 140. I'm your host, Ace Harris, here with Mia Evans. We'll be right back, y'all. Welcome, welcome back. This is the 116 Life on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius Channel 140. I'm your host, Ace Harris, here with the amazing Mia Evans out here dropping these gems, talking about mental health. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I think this is obviously a, uh, a needed topic for some groups in the church. It's like a controversial topic, yeah. which is, maybe it, sh- it shouldn't be controversial. It shouldn't be, yeah. It's just like people need help. Like I think m- mental health, physical health, spiritual health. I think it's one of those tough conversations yeah. that, well, I won't say do air quotes, but it's one of those tough conversations that we need to have that sure. people be kind of like yeah, tiptoeing, yeah, tip-toeing into. Tip-toeing. Yeah. yeah. It's, 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 maybe because me and you, I hate to bring race and culture in it, but I do feel like there are, that helps. It does play a part in the relevancy of the topic. Like mm-hmm. I feel like Growing up in an African church or a black mm. church, you know, I, I don't, I think it seems like we're, that sounds, but how does our culture shape how important that is to us? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, and, and something I think that, that, that statue said about people feeling like um, prayer can cure. I just, I mean, I'm, I may be ignorant and I'm not saying there can't be de- deliverance. Yeah. Yes. And uh, people that are really like, um, you know, have beat or overcome anxiety, that mm-hmm. death to it, yes. Mm-hmm. But I wonder if, like, viewing those struggles as something that's supposed to be cured mm-hmm. is maybe looking at it an incomplete way. Mm-hmm. Like, even like the people that look at um, those things and say, hey, we're going to go to the scripture and read so we can fix your issue. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. I wonder if God is not looking at scripture like scripture is not necessarily, I don't know if I look at scripture like this, like a, like a antidote, like a medicine mm-hmm. per se. It is a revelation. That's good. It's, it's you, you, God's revealed in it. And therefore you walk in his knowledge of what the situation is and transformation happens by yielding to the spirit. And then he may like the healing comes from being um, him, him revealing himself in you versus like, yo, go read this, just pray about it, go read the scripture, then you're good. So that so speaking of scripture, what comes to mind is Philippians chapter four, verse six to seven, which I was I want to read quickly. This is just one of my favorite scriptures. Um, I think I've read it on the show before, yeah, but I think you have. more Bible, y'all. Come on, man. So, <laughs> come on, come on, what are we talking about? <laughs> it's perfect, yeah. yeah. Um, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And I think that 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 um, I think I, I've heard people use that scripture as like a, yo, go go read. <laughs> you have mm-hmm. a mental health day. Go read the scripture. You'll be good. Yeah. It's like, well, I feel like what Paul's trying to invite us to think about for me is like, don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer, by petition, by asking specifically, with thanksgiving, present your request. Uh, and the peace of God, uh, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind, which is like, I think the mental health that we wrestle with, for me, is like, um, like it's an attack on our minds, right? Yes. I think the enemy is like trying to attack our minds. And in the need for therapy and counseling, we need to be guarding our hearts and minds, which can only be done in Going to going to look going to going to Jesus. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I, yes. I don't make, I don't want to sound like belittling, but no, no, no. I think I, I think saying. we need to go to God with our requests, with our anxieties, and He'll He'll help guard mm-hmm. your hearts and minds. And I feel like that's a that's a great place to begin our mental health journey. Mm-hmm. Not to stay there, but that's a good place to like lead us into like how can we find fruitful clinical work, fruitful 
um, you know, if, if, if needed, medicinal, whatever is needed. I'm not here to yeah. tell you was, yeah. if you take it, like, I'm not here to do that because I, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But I me, mean, yeah. what, what do you think about that? Uh, I think that, I think that what we're saying is, is that at the end of the day, Jesus still fits in the midst of this. Oh yeah, for sure. At the end for of the sure. day, for sure. you know, even with, when it comes to Christian culture and, and, uh, you know, mainstream culture for believers, yeah. for the lives we live, yeah. we still got to go to Jesus. For we sure. still got to run to with Jesus. Everything. And especially scriptures like that is when I tell you, I would be lying to you if I told you that I didn't have a bookmark in my Bible app that mm -hmm. says, read when you feel anxious. Oh, that's fire. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got because that. One thing, yeah. like you, you already said it, when it comes to the enemy is going to attack you in your mind. For sure. And when I tell you, he lighting you up with all these bullets of thoughts in your mind and you not having scripture, you ain't got no bullets. For sure. You know what I'm saying? So For that's sure. when you don't For, know ooh, how good. to... You don't know that fight back. You know what I'm sure. saying? When I got that revelation, it's like I'm going to have mine. You know what I'm saying? So therefore, when those things come to mind, when those feelings come, things like that, I I can have something that can bring me that peace that you said sure. that transcends all understanding. And I think even sometimes because we're so used to diagnosing ourselves <laughs> and saying like uh, these of uh, diagnosing ourselves with certain mental illnesses before that people get professional Ooh, help and things like that's that. Good too. We immediately that's good. talk ourselves into saying, Oh, I'm this. Oh, I'm that. When Ooh. I think that speaks to your scripture saying surpasses your understanding. Oh, you feel like you should be this. Am I, you see what I'm saying though? No, it's like you, you feel like that's you should be this, dope. but I, I have this weird piece about it, but I'm usually anxious, but I'm usually overthinking. I know I, I'm speaking on behalf of me. I, sure. I do go through this all the time. I'm like, I, I'm usually anxious with things like this. I'm usually nervous in environments like this. Like, why am I okay? Because that piece that you pray about mm. that surpasses your understanding, how you usually know, how you usually feel it's that that's what's raining on you right now. Right. That's like leaning into truths like that sure. are what are what I don't, like you said, not cure, but can be able to help us endure. Seasons. Yeah. And it's all about the endurance of sure. it all. And I think, and I think that guard in your hearts and mind ain't about like your, if, if depression, and anxiety are literally attacking. Cause like we talk about spiritual warfare. I think there's mental warfare yeah. too. And so as depression, anxiety and stress is attacking your mind and that scripture, some people read that scripture and feel like, okay, I need to guard my hearts and mind from, these things entering my mind. Mm -hmm. I also feel like we need to guard our minds from thinking we don't need therapy. Like we need to guard our mind from the thoughts of thinking I need yeah. to just, so it's the guarding of the hearts and mind is, oh, is li it's not limited to the attacks of those things coming in, but also the pride and not surrendering our mind and hearts to Sheesh. do the therapy we need. I think I speak it to yeah. myself. Cause and, so I had a conversation with Trip Biz like a year ago. So i come from, you know, my family's from like Liberian, mm -hmm. like, I may get in trouble for this. I got. I, I viewed counseling and therapy as amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's helpful, mm -hmm. and I also felt like that the construct was not. It was a very Western way of doing therapy, mm -hmm. and didn't necessarily speak to the families that I am connected to. Not that it couldn't, but I always viewed it like I think it's great. I just. Uh, what was I told Trip and Pitt? I was like, I do my therapy differently. Mm, talk uh, about that. So I just get my homeboys and we talk about real life. That to yeah. me, that's therapeutic. Now, yeah. I'm not conflating that as real therapy. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that uh, I had to like learn that there is a time and space to be, to have like therapy amongst your friends and, and events and get that stuff is getting, you're purging some of that stuff out. And there is benefits to doing professional yes. therapy yeah. and having someone who's, objective speaking to your situation that's which good. i which i did over the past year it was, it was like one of my goals like yo i gotta get <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah out here doing like bible studies and mm -hmm. preaching but you need to go get some especially after my dad passed so i did that and i think the work was good and i, I still need to do some more and i you know i think there are people maybe maybe wired like me who uh engage mental health differently to where yeah. I do when i when i feel worried and stressed i do i ain't trying to be religious and like brag but i'm literally I'm, I'm pulling up Psalm 61. I'm pulling up that. I'm literally attacking quickly. Man, Because I think that the, the you know, those thoughts can take captive. And so I think we need, I, for me, it's like do that. And I need to do some more sessions just to like make mm -hmm. sure there's not blind spots in my mental wiring that where the enemy can catch me slipping. And I'm like, 
off the deep end. There's so many dimensions to it. Sure, and yeah. I love that you brought that up because for some people, it's therapeutic when you're able to be with your boys and go sh- and sh- go shoot hoops. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah, talk to them about sure, it. Sure. It's therapeutic for me sometimes going to my grandmother's house Ooh. where I can just be able to sit in the couch yeah. and it's like, she ain't got no Wi-Fi like that. So I could just like, you know, <laughs> I really, I really got to sit with her. Off I'm, I'm, I'm off the grid for real. Oh, it's therapeutic for people to be able to be off social media. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like it's, there are so many different dimensions yeah. that can be able to help you relieve between your two ears. I want to go to scripture. Go ahead, go ahead, please, please. Real quick. Um, and everyone's heard of um, this one. I guess I'm just like Ace, where um, Psalms 46.10, where it says, be still mm. and know that I'm God. And in the Hebrew, be still means to relax mm. and withdraw, drop down, abandon. That's so good. Refrain. So mm. like, even like, or like in forsake, like sometimes we have to, abandon certain, I don't know, maybe certain things that we've learned over the course of years. Like, I guess, like you said, I guess talking down on um, getting the help that people may want or even relaxing, being able to, like people think that it's like, be still. Like, what does that look like? I'm just still, I don't move. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes it's you just being able to Relax. Relax. You being able to refrain from sure. being on social media so I love much. Because that. that will that will take a toll on someone's mental health. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's good. being able to leave certain things of this world, mm. your leave your um leave away that stress, be able to refrain from um you self sabotaging yourself, yeah, uh, like being aware sure. and us uh, when I say self analyze, I mean just like being able to interrogate sometimes the toxic things that we do that are toxic to us. You know what I'm saying? For like sure. that can kind of help still ourselves. Yeah, and therefore that's hard. with that with being still, we have to remind ourselves of who God is. Sure. How he's good. always present. For he's sure. Always right there. And um he's with us when it comes to I think to that's all good. Things. So you you you're basically giving practical Cause that's what things. we need though, right? <laughs> we need some practical. Like, okay. I've noticed that there are so many practical things we can do. I mean, I think there have been studies that have backed this out, backed this up. Like going outside in the sun. In the sun. Go for a Get some walk, vitamin D. Man. See some trees. Hear some birds. Yes. Maybe leave the phone at the crib if you can. Maybe leave the podcast at the crib too. Mm-hmm. Just kind of go for a walk. Driving in silence. Driving in silence. Just, just be present. Be still mm-hmm. and just observe. Um, God's and who is in everything, right? Because sometimes yeah. God wants to talk to you, but everything is so loud. It's so loud. Your mind is loud. You got your music loud, social media loud, your mama and them loud, your mm. friends are loud, your homeboys is loud. You know, so being still, you can't, you have to silence all those things. You sure. got to refrain and leave the, abandon yeah. the noise. Because I, I think people are going to challenge and say, hey, I mean, yes, of course, clinical therapy is very important for those who are at that level and mm-hmm. maybe for most people, right? Yeah. Um, but I don't know if you, I don't know if clinical therapy weekly is good while every day, first thing you do when you wake up is logging on Instagram. I don't Step think. Step on them toes, Ace. I don't think that's good for our mental health. It's our not. Spirits, it's not. I don't think it's I'm good. I'll be real with you. I did. I saw someone post um, saying how the things that play into people being anxious. And one of the main things was waking up and the first thing you do is look on social media. So I was like, okay, I'm going to test it. Ace, for two weeks, I was not on social media until like noon. That's good. Ace, when I tell you that played a big part in how I felt in the morning. Facts. And people really underestimate things like little practical things like that. But then when you see the difference. Yeah, yeah. Like you got to, yeah, meditate, prayer. I know it's like cliche, not cliche, but the idea of waking up and praying in the morning. Look, it's fine time to spend with God, however your rhythm is. I ain't. Mm-hmm. It's no. There's no. I, I feel like mornings have been good for me. Just no, to me too. Start that morning off, but I do feel like it's not just go to therapy. It's also get off. You can't log in. You can't log in a TikTok at. Not the first at, thing it, you it's, do. It's, it's. I think it's not helping our our conditions. And I know it. When I do that, I know I'm thrown off. Thrown off. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I'm like, I have to go to bed and log out. Mm-hmm. Sometimes when I eat dinner. I'm still doing better at this. Sometimes when I come home from a you know, busy day of kids, mm-hmm. reach, work, and if when I have my phone with me in the kitchen, it'd be, even if I'm not answering, something be, it'd be like irritate, it'd be like calling me. No, I feel when you. When I leave that phone in that room, man, dinner be chill. Yes. I'll be like present and yeah. I'm more relaxed. My mental energy is a little bit stronger because I'm not thinking about something else that I should or should not tend to. I'm I'm focused on my family. I'm focused on my on my Lord and how He wants me to be present. So I think 
mental energy mental energy is a thing mental health is real let's give ourselves the mental energy so our mental health can be better with some practical things yeah in addition to the spiritual things in addition to the clinical things i think it's not either or it's always it's both all. it's all of it and mm-hmm. I, I think for us who are not mental health experts i think i, I hope encourage that those who are watching tuning in can hopefully advocate for those who need it um let's lean in let's have the conversation let's grow in it um and hopefully um you know god will uh redeem us and and always um just posture us condition us to to deal with these things probably till we till we till we in the grave you know what i'm saying that's it man (laughs) and that's the episode yo thank y'all so much for um thank you ace for even um sharing even as a man because some people aren't you know uh hesitate you know when it comes to things like that um leaning in you said that beautifully and you did that for this episode thank you you too and shout out to everyone that's tuned in and we hope that you guys were able to lean into this conversation the same way we we were here but as always that's a wrap here on another episode of the 116 life here on holy culture radio Sirius xm channel 140 ace harris mia evans signing off we'll see you guys later